Hello, everybody, and welcome to exercise three on page 34 of the workbook. Let's take a minute to read this problem together. In the graph below, we are given a function f and its first and second derivatives. That's the picture that we're seeing over here. And they'd like us to use the graphs to answer the following questions as accurately as possible. So this is going to be a nice opportunity to kind of explore some of the relationships between a function and its first and second derivatives. All right. So let's start out with part A here. It would like us to determine on what intervals is f increasing and decreasing. And we'll start first by just considering the question of increasing. Where would the function f be increasing? OK, well, first of all, notice in our graph over here, f is the solid black function that we're seeing. We're just trying to determine where is that function rising left to right. Okay, and I'm going to plot a couple of points on here. So it looks to me like from there to there, our function would be rising. And so what we need to lay our hands on are the x values where we kind of start increasing and where we stop increasing. And if I had to guess, I would say that this x value here is maybe about negative 2.7. Okay, and the one over here is maybe about 2.7. Okay, so the interval of increase would be about negative 2.7 to 2.7, but I want to point out kind of an interesting connection here. Notice that that interval is exactly where the first derivative graph is above the x-axis. Okay, that might remind you of a connection that we made earlier, that a function is increasing where its derivative is above the x-axis. Okay, so... We, we kind of have two ways to do the problem. We can either look at the function itself and notice that it's increasing between minus 2.7 and 2.7, or we can just look at the derivative and notice that the derivative is positive. Okay, so long story short here, our answer to where it's increasing would be on the interval from negative 2.7 to 2.7. Remind you just of what this notation means. That looks like a point, but it really represents the interval of x values between x but were between negative 2.7 and 2.7 just another way of writing it okay and then what about where f is decreasing okay well that would be where the derivative is below the x axis okay i'm going to just remind you up there that that's really x axis that i meant Okay, so where is the derivative below the x-axis? Well, there's a little stretch here, okay, and then another stretch here. So that's really two intervals. So from negative 8 to negative 2.7, and then from 2.7 to 8. Okay, so we'll write both of those intervals down, and those are going to be the intervals where x, where f is decreasing. Okay, so I think we have an answer to part A, and we are ready to move on to part B. And just so that our graph doesn't get too cluttered here, I'm going to go ahead and erase the stuff that we drew in before. All right. So what is part B asking us? Well, now they're asking us about concavity. Where is f of x concave up and where is it concave down? Okay, you might remember concave up, for example, is about where the function is shaped like an, a right side up ball. Okay, so if we just consider that part of the question for a minute here, we could try to answer that question by directly looking at the graph of f and figuring out where does it look like a right side up ball. Okay, and you can see portions of the graph that sort of have that shape, maybe around this part of the graph, maybe a little bit over here, but it's not so easy to determine where is the cutoff point. In other words, where does it stop looking like a right side up bowl and start looking like an upside down bowl? Uh, that's not something I can do exactly graphically very well. Okay, so here it's really helpful to remember that concavity, another way to think about concavity is to think about the second derivative. In other words, a function is going to be concave up where its second derivative is above the x-axis. Okay, can we find 
intervals like that. I'm going to just get rid of these marks that I made. So the second derivative is the dotted graph. Okay, right here. And so we're looking for places where that second derivative is above the x-axis. I see one interval from there to there. Okay, and what do you think the x value is at that point? Maybe about mm, negative 4.6. And then there's another little stretch of the second derivative that's above the x-axis there. And that point looks like about maybe 4.6. So looking at where that second derivative is positive, it looks like we have two intervals from negative 4.6 to 0. And then again from 4.6 to 8. And if you look carefully, that looks plausible because if we go to the, to the original function and kind of trace out the part of our graph that go with those two intervals, notice that we does indeed look like we have an upward ball shape on those two intervals. So there would be the second one. Okay, and then similarly concave down, just the other way around. Now we're looking for where the second derivative is below the x-axis. Okay, and let's see, there's one stretch there and then another stretch there. Okay, and let's see if we nail down the intervals. We started at negative 8 and went until negative 4.6. That's the first place where the second derivative was negative. And then another interval from about 0 to 4.6. Okay, so two intervals again. Okay, and just to make ourselves feel better, we could just notice that um, on the, if we look at the corresponding graph of f on those intervals, notice that it does indeed look like it has the kind of upside down bowl shape to it. Okay, and it should because we're saying that the function is concave down on those two intervals. Okay, and I think we've completed this question.